I wanted to speak about a topic that I often see on social media groups and uh, message boards, and that is charging for tape jobs at tournaments. Now, I know the jury is out on this, and quite frankly, I really don't have an opinion about whether you should be charging or shouldn't be charging. I know that some people feel like it's super unprofessional and you should just be paid what your services are worth and you shouldn't have to have a price list and be charging for tape jobs. Um, and so I don't, I don't necessarily have an opinion about it, but I did want to share some kind of tips and tricks and really just like advice on what I think might be the best way to approach this topic because I don't necessarily know that there's really like a hard and fast on what is the right answer and what is the wrong answer. I honestly believe that in many situations, and this might be one of them, that there's opportunity for both it to be paid for and taken care of ahead of time, but then also for you to negotiate and be able to come to a compromise with your client. What it comes down to is basically if you don't feel that the services that you're going to be providing, so in this specific situation, we're likely talking about prophylactic taping. So this is gonna be you know, a volleyball tournament or basketball tournament or, or, or soccer uh, fields going on, whatever it is. And let's say that the client's expectations of your presence at that event is for you to be doing preventative prophylactic taping for their attendees. Well, sometimes one, you may not be able to do this simply because the demand of yourself for services in general might be too high and you just don't have the availability to be providing this kind of taping. So if that's the situation, I have a separate video that addresses that. But let's assume that you do have the availability, you are willing to provide this service, but you don't necessarily feel like maybe the hourly rate that you're being compensated, or just generally speaking, you want to be able to charge for these services. My recommendation is to create a price list for yourself. So think of all of the common or the general tape jobs. This would be ankles and wrists and maybe uh, fingers, I don't really know if we're taping knees, but knees, um, anything that might come to mind for you, especially in how it relates to the demographic that you're gonna be working with, and present that to your client upfront. Make sure that they understand and know that it is your intention to be charging for these services and try to educate them about why you feel that that's necessary. This is a great opportunity for you to speak with this client and help them to understand the value of the athletic trainer, not only in being available and on site for acute and emergency response, but also in how you can aid in prevention, but that that actually is a totally different subset of the services that you can provide. And maybe it may warrant you charging an additional cost for those. Secondarily, there may be a supplies concern. So make sure that you're speaking with the organization or the event that you're gonna be providing services at and have the conversation with them about who is gonna be responsible for providing the supplies necessary to do these tape jobs. And this is really where I see a lot of the conversation coming to a stopping point at, which is the client kind of feels that the athletic trainer should be arriving with full supplies to do their job as expected, whereas the athletic trainer understands that really doing this kind of taping is not necessarily required in order to be of service to this client. Typically, they are looking to remediate uh, liabilities and legalities, and so having you there is more about an emergency response type thing. So if they are under the impression and have the expectation that you're gonna be providing taping, make sure that you are discussing with them who's gonna provide the supplies. Some options there are, one, they can provide the supplies. So while it is totally understandable for the athletic trainer to arrive with their own kit 
And this should be non-disposable items like your scissors and tweezers and um, maybe some of your favorite supplies that you like to work with or splints or ace bandages. That is okay, but to ask for the client to provide the disposable supplies, which are band-aids and gauze and tape, that is totally understandable. Secondarily, you can provide the supplies for this, but I would recommend increasing your hourly rate and also increasing, or I should say not increasing, providing the availability in your contract with them to have a clause where anything above and beyond what is considered normal could be reimbursed. So maybe you factor in a couple dollars per hour for what roll might, for what tape might cost you, but then also have the clause in your contract in case it just gets out of control. Or three, you can create a price list. These options give your client the opportunity to consider various options within the services that you are providing. So you're not necessarily giving them a hard and fast. You're not saying it has to be one way or it has to be the other. You're really coming to them from a negotiating standpoint and providing several opportunities for them to see what fits within their scheme. And then just get it all down in writing. And then just get it all down in writing. Provide your price list, make sure that you are upfront and transparent and honest about what your intentions are with doing these tape jobs. And here's the last thing and, and something that I always want athletic trainers to remember. If you are at a stopping point with your client where they're not really in agreement with any of those three options that we've already presented and you are really feeling uncomfortable with this being provided as a service and none of those three options they're kind of taking the bait on, just limit your scope of practice. It is always an option for you to simply say, I'm not gonna provide that service. Even when it's in our scope of practice as an athletic trainer, we don't always have to provide it, especially when we're working per diem events. So make sure that you're keeping that in your back pocket try to work out an, uh, a contract with them that makes sense for the, both, for the both of you. And sometimes what that might end up looking like is, I'm just here for acute response, emergency action in the event that it's needed.